Crude oil arrives at an oil refinery either via a large ocean tanker or via pipeline. Crude is usually stored in very large, often a half million barrel tanks. Normally, if the refinery is running more than one crude type, they try to segment the different crudes in different tanks, at least to the degree to which they can achieve that goal. The crude unit is the first unit in an oil refinery. It is a large and complex distillation tower. Here you see it with the vacuum tower in the background, since they are usually coupled together. The goal of the crude unit is to separate the crude into a number of different fractions, such as naphtha, which is essentially gasoline boiling range material, kerosene, often used as jet fuel, and diesel. However, it also produces some heavier streams which will undergo additional processing. Much of this additional processing will be aimed at producing more gasoline. The crude unit also produces natural gas and LPG streams such as propane and butane. A crude unit has a number of differences when compared to traditional distillation columns. For example, it does not have a reboiler. Rather, all the vaporization is achieved through a complex preheat train of heat exchangers and a large crude unit furnace. On this diagram, there's only a couple exchangers shown, but in reality is usually a series of 10 to 20 exchangers transferring heat with many different streams. Since it is largely vaporized, crude unit feed enters very close to the bottom of the tower. In a crude unit, heat is removed in various heat exchanger circuits called pump arounds, in addition to cooling at the top of the tower. This is done to capture heat at higher temperature levels since the temperatures at lower levels in the tower are higher. This has the effect of reducing the size of the crude unit furnace. However, removing heat in this manner comes at the expense of some separation efficiency. In the middle of the preheat train, there is what's called a desalter. Crude oil usually contains a significant percent of brines, or salts, that would cause very significant corrosion problems if they were not removed. In fact, corrosion in the crude unit overhead heat exchangers is still a very common problem even after desalting. Unlike a pure product like water, which has one boiling point at a given pressure, petroleum products boil over a range because there are so many different chemical compounds in crude oil. For example, gasoline material boils roughly between 200 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Refiners draw products by adjusting what they call the cut point. That's the split between two products. Here you see the cut point slightly less than 400 degrees between naphtha and kerosene. Cut points are often adjusted on a seasonal basis. To increase the amount of gasoline material, refiners will increase the naphtha kerosene cut point. The diagram shows it increasing from slightly less than 400 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter to more than 400 degrees Fahrenheit during the summertime. As you can see, the amount of naphtha shown in red will increase while the kerosene material shown in green will decrease. However, there are practical limits as to how high this cut point can be raised. In the winter time, refiners will reduce the naphtha flow and let the back end of naphtha fall into kerosene to increase the volume of kerosene for more heating oils up to flash point limits for wintertime use. To understand what endpoint really is, for a given product, if you put the material in a flask and boil it off, it will produce a curve similar to that shown. It will always have a more pronounced curve at the beginning and end of the distillation. Here is the endpoint. If you overlay one product, for example, naphtha, shown in blue, over kerosene, shown in orange, you'll see that the heavy end of naphtha will have a higher boiling point than the initial boiling point of kerosene. That's what they refer to as the gap. Refiners would like to minimize this gap, if at all possible, since it can lead to product quality problems. For example, endpoint limits in the naphtha or kerosene flashpoint issues. There are side stream strippers on the tower that use steam in order to vaporize the lightest material of those products back into the tower. 
Here are the product draws from naphtha, which is essentially gasoline, kerosene, and diesel. There is also an additional draw for atmospheric gas oil, AGO, which is a feed to the FCC. Crude tower bottoms is sent to the vacuum tower for further fractionation. Overhead vapor is cooled in a series of exchangers, the first of which is usually the first exchanger in the preheat train. Then there are a series of fin fan air exchangers for further cooling. Liquid that is condensed is called light straight run or LSR for short. It is material that is usually blended into gasoline. The vapor is compressed and further processed in the gas plant.